happening? Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, a little bit of a different approach, big word, towards this video today. Um, you know, there'll be no recipe here. I just kind of wanted to do a bit of a background about myself. Um, a bit of my story, a bit of my journey. I suppose from where I was to where I am now, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm just going to start by going way, way back, like, you know what I mean? And um, you know I'm fun size like as I always say it like I'm fun size feeling like but like you know when I was in school and stuff like I'm on about primary school now secondary school and stuff like um you know I always was very very self conscious about my height like because I was kind of always the smallest and kind of thinnest person in the class and stuff you know and, and that really affected me from a really young age um you, you know you mightn't think that it affected me but it affected me anyway like you know what I mean from a really really young age I was kind of really insecure and that kind of stuff. Um, and you know, I was trying to figure out a way in my head, like just as a young fella, like um, how how could I kind of like stop that, like, and how could I get rid of that and stuff? And I suppose, like, you know, I was kind of like looking for some sort of an ego, I suppose. I was chasing an ego, like, you know what I mean? And um, you know, I got into boxing through that, like, from that, like, I went to boxing and was like, right, if I become a boxer now, people will realize that I can look after myself, and it doesn't matter if I'm small, I can still look after myself, so I'll be okay, like. So, like, from a really young age, I got into boxing and martial arts, like, and um. You know, once I kind of got into it, once I started getting good at it and stuff like it, fucking, it kind of, it eased my insecurity inside me, do you know what I mean? Like, that people would think I can look after myself, you know, and all this, all this crazy stuff that was going through a young fella's head, like, you know what I mean? But, like, I have mental health starts at any age, like, do you know what I mean? Once you can start to think, like, you're, that's mental health, like, um, so, like, I was really, really insecure, like, about that, you know what I mean? So, I got into boxing, happy days, I had an ego, like, you know what I mean? Um, I suppose throughout school, like, I was never really the brightest crayon in the box, like, as I said that loads of times before, like, you know what I mean? Um, and again, that was another thing there that I kind of, I wasn't happy about, like, do you know what I mean? I was kind of struggling with reading and stuff. I remember I used to have to read out loud in class, like, and everyone was loving it. was my turn to read because I would, like, fucking stuttering away and stuff, you know what I mean? Like, and, like, I could read it in my head, right? Like, I could read the words, like, in my head, but I just couldn't say them out loud, like, and I couldn't say them out loud without getting mixed up with my B's and my D's and this kind of stuff, like, you know what I mean? And, and like this was working my whole way through secondary school as well, like and it was it was tough, like. It really, really was tough, like, do you know what I mean? Um so like school I enjoyed going to school, right? I enjoyed going to school for the laugh I had with the lads, for the crack, do you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. I enjoyed school then, like, um but I suppose like as you know, as I was growing up and stuff, like I'd really I had a few people really, really close to me that were struggling with addiction problems and that kind of side of stuff, like, do you know what I mean? Like and like you know, I always in my in my, in my head said I was going to look after him and help him as much as I possibly could. Again, from a really really young age, um, I was trying to help him as much as I possibly could and stuff. Like you know what I mean? I'd see him in the pub and stuff, and they'd be telling me, "Don't tell my dad that uh, there's your dad I'm here and stuff like that." And I wouldn't like you know what I mean? I'd be like, I'll help him. No, I'll, I'll do do what I can, whatever and stuff like. But like in the back of my head, I always kind of looked up to that lifestyle. Like do you know what I mean? Like I looked up to the fucking. Gangster lifestyle, we call it, like you know what I mean, of taking drugs and drinking and and, and you know everything that goes with it, like um you know. And I remember someone close to me passed away from a drug overdose, like and uh, you know, like I use the funeral as a reason to party and drink and stuff, like do you know what I mean, and like. From from a young fella that always said that they were never going to be like him, and then I used that as a kind of reason to get pissed and to go on a session and that kind of side of things, like, you know. And I suppose, like, the drink with me started kind of late enough, like, 16, 17 job, whatever. And, like, slowly after that, kind of the drugs came in with it too, and, like, so, like, it started off with, like, smoking joints once a week, to me at the weekend with the boys and stuff, whatever, to maybe taking a bump of coke, the odd time on a night out, that kind of side of stuff, like, you know what I mean? And, and uh, like at this stage, you know, the boxing was gone. Like, you know I mean, as soon as I kind of started getting heavy on the drink and that kind of side of things, like the boxing went. Like, like my last two boxing fights were Irish international fights against Scotland and England. Like, I haven't fought since. Um, but like, you know, very very quickly, like, um, I went from taking drugs kind of one night a week to seven nights a week. Like, you know I mean, in seven days a week, and I was drinking heavily and I was taking drugs heavily, and like, I didn't even know. I didn't even I didn't even see the progression, I didn't even realise the progression, like you know what I mean, but like I have an addictive personality, like I do, like um and I suppose like you know drugs and like being able to get drugs for people and stuff was my second ego, like you know what I mean? The boxing was gone and I was back to my insecure self and stuff and like I suppose that get being able to get drugs from people was my next kind of like ego, like you know what I mean? Like like I, someone would ask me to get them something like and I'd make nothing off it, like you know what I mean? 
but I'd still make sure I went to get it for him just so that I could get the ego of selling drugs, like, you know what I mean? And this was young, like, you know what I mean? Um, just getting the ego of selling drugs and stuff, uh, which is kind of funny, like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's funny now looking back on it, like, but like, you know, like, it kind of got to a stage where I didn't realize the progression that, that, that happened in my drug taking and drug use and stuff, like, and I just thought it was the normal, like, you know what I mean? I did, like, I thought it was the normal, like, you know, I didn't, I thought, like, sure everyone else is doing it, why can't I do it and stuff, like, I didn't see the damage it, had, it was going to cause, like, I didn't see the damage that was going to happen from it. Um, but, like, I suppose, like, the more I kind of took drugs and stuff, like, you know, it gave me confidence I never had before at the start, I suppose, like, it gave me fucking, you know, I was nuts, like, I used to think I kind of needed drinking me uh, to speak to people and, have a conversation, that kind of side of things, like, do you know what I mean? Um, you know, I, I, I just loved it, like, I loved the lifestyle of it, like, at the start, like, I did. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, it's a feeling I never felt before, like, and I just loved it, like. I remember the first time I took, this is going back a bit, like, realistically, I'm going to be jumping back and forth and stuff, because my head's like a sieve, like, but, remember the first time I ever took a pill, like, ecstasy, sitting there, looking at it, contemplating for, like, 40 minutes, sitting on the stairs, like, will I take it, will I not, will I take it, will I not, because I thought, there was a difference between, I thought, being taking cocaine and drinking was allowed, like, was okay, acceptable, but these then were, like, a new step up for me, like, you know what I mean? Um, but they're all class A drugs, like, they're all the same, like, um, I was looking at the pill, whatever I took it, like, and then I remember I went, I took ecstasy pills three nights a week for, like, ten weeks straight, you know what I mean? After I kind of got into it, like, um, and, like, I suppose, like, the more drugs I took and stuff, like, you know, I started becoming very unreliable about work and that kind of side of things, like, you know what I mean? Uh, I was really unreliable in work. To be honest, like I'd go in off my head or I wouldn't go in at all, I'd be going in late. You know, I'd be going in but I wouldn't be in any condition to work, that kind of side of things like and you know my family at home started to realise that I was kinda getting into drugs and stuff like you know what I mean? Because like my dad would know the story with drugs and stuff, like he doesn't take them, he's never taken them and stuff, but he'd know the story, he'd know the signs and he he's been around it before, like and like my mother was clueless, like, do you know what I mean? She was like she was like I'm her son, that was it, like whatever, like so like you know what I mean I caused a lot of drama and hassle at home for them because they knew the crack like do you know what I mean they really really knew the crack like my, my dad knew the crack what I was up to and stuff like do you know what I mean and I suppose my relationship at home started to deteriorate big time because like I didn't care like do you know what I mean I didn't care about anyone I just cared about myself and my drugs and and that was it like do you know what I mean like so like a lot of conflict and fighting at home like you know I mean me coming home fucking off my head or drunk or this that the other like and just causing havoc and that kind of side of things like do you know what I mean um and you know like I had a best friend, like, he's still my best friend, I suppose, like, but like, I had a friend and, like, you know, I, I never ever speak about him in any of the, the, the videos I put up or any of that kind of stuff, I don't, like, because, like, he was my best buddy, like, from a very young age, like, you know, like, even my screensaver, like, so, like, even to this day, like, it's, it's me and him as kids, like, you know, we used to go camping out of his front garden, but then I used to get scared, obviously, and, like, we'd bring it into the kitchen and camp in the kitchen, like, but um, you know, he's my best friend, like, um, the whole way up and stuff, like, we were literally stuck to the hip, whatever and stuff, do you know what I mean? And uh, it's fucking weird talking about him, because I never do, like, but, but like, you know, he passed away, like, um, non-drug related passed away, like, do you know what I mean? Like, he, he, he just passed away, like, when we were, I see five, five years ago, in 13 or, or 15 days, two weeks or anything. Five years ago, now he passed away. Like, and um, you know, that was just, that was. I kind of went off the rails after that happened. Like, I did. Like, you know what I mean? I, I went off the fucking rails completely. Like, I was like, what's the point anymore? Like, you know what I mean? Oh, oh, fucking thoughts going through my head. Like, why wasn't it me? Why was it him? And all this kind of stuff. Like, and you know, that's when my drinking and drug use kind of took um, a turn for the worse more than anything. Like, you know. Um, I didn't care anymore, like, I didn't care about my life, like, I mean, I didn't care who I was fucking over, I didn't care what I possibly done to who, I didn't care what I, what I didn't turn to anyone, like, you know what I mean, anymore, it was just like me and my drugs and that was the most important to me, like, I didn't care about my parents, I didn't care about who the fuck I was fucking over to get money or to get drugs and stuff, like, you know, I was fucking stealing from my family for drugs, you know, I was, I was coming home and I was, off my head like I've punched my father, I've actually punched my mother in the cross for I've trying to punch my dad, like my brothers, you know what I mean? They the people closest to me got the worst brunt of me and my worst like, do you know what I mean? And like, you know, 
after all this mad shit I've done and all this bad shit I've done, like, you know, I started to hate the person I've become. You know, I hated myself, like, I hated the person I've become when I, you know, the guilt and the shame around my actions just ate me up every single fucking day, like, they just ate me up, like, as in, like, you know, I thought the only way to stop thinking like this and stop feeling like this was to suppress myself with more drinking, more drugs. Again, like, with no money to pay for them, but I didn't care, like. Somehow I managed to find drugs no matter how much I owed or no matter who I owed money to, I'd still find a way to get drugs, like. And, like, you know, I kind of started becoming a bit of a violent person and that kind of side of things, like, you know what I mean? Fighting, street and that kind of stuff, and... You know, just like getting myself in situations where like owing thousands and having no way of paying, like, you know, some days they're waking up owing fucking four or five grand on a day, like, and I wouldn't have a brown penny in my wallet to pay for it, like, you know what I mean? And, like, I've got bailed out by my family members and that kind of side of stuff, and ever, like, and I do it and I wouldn't give a shit, I do the exact same thing again because, like, I thought I needed drinking drugs, like, I thought I needed them to suppress how I was feeling, and I thought I needed them to suppress my mental health. I did. I was like, this is the only way I could not think of, this is the only way I could get out of my head, you know what I mean? And I suppose, you know, the suicidal thought started, like, um, I was like 22 years of age, like 21, 22 years of age, and I wanted to take my own life, like, I, I didn't want to be alive anymore, like, I saw no other way out but to take my own life, you know, and, and I tried on numerous occasions, like, I did, I, I, I tried to hang myself, I tried to cut myself, I tried to jump off bridges, I tried to do a, everything possible, like, you know, I can't even count the amount of times I, I tried to kill myself and I can't even count the amount of times I thought of killing myself, like, and, you know, I'd wake up from a suicide attempt, like, and, like, I'd say I couldn't even kill myself, right, like, you know, that shit eats me up today, still, like, it does, like, it does, and, you know, like, it's just an ongoing cycle, like, chasing my fucking tail or drinking drugs, like, and the shit I got up to, the shit that people I fucked over, like, I done horrible things to the people closest to me, like, I mean, I did, like, I did horrible things, like, um, and, you know, like, I suppose it was my last, my last suicide attempt, it should have been the 3rd of the 1st, 2018, I actually can't believe I had to look at my hand there to realise when that was, but again, head like mashed poppies, um, you know, I was there and I was drinking and I was taking coke and ketamine all night and stuff, like, and I was on my own, like, and, you know, I looked across and I seen what was there, like, and I, seen, I knew if I took him that, like, I wouldn't wake up and I shouldn't have waken up, like, you know what I mean? And, like, I didn't ring anybody, I didn't text anybody, I, just, I didn't care, like, I mean, I, th I thought it was going to be the only way I was going to get away from, from the thoughts in my head, like, I thought it was going to be the only way I was going to get away from them thoughts eating me up every day, like, and I took him, I took them all, uh, I was crushing some up, I was snorting them and I was taking the rest, and, and I thought that was it, like, do you know what I mean? I thought that, that was the end of me, like, I, I finally got away from my head, like, and you know, I finally escaped, like, I finally got what I wanted. And I woke up 14 hours later and the whole inside of my stomach lining had come up and I was in intensive care for a couple of days, they'd be pumping with sodium and stuff, like, and I, I couldn't believe I'd survived it, like. I was like, I still hated myself, I still didn't want to be alive, I was telling nurses I didn't want to be alive, you know. I was on a list for a liver transplant at 22 years of age. And I was shouting and roaring in the hospital, like, and I didn't want to be alive, like, I was like, how the fuck did I fail again, like, how could I not take my own life, like, how could I not do it right, like, I mean. And you know, like, up in a hospital bed, like every single morning I woke up, my family were at the end of my bed. Even after all the shit I put them through, like, you know, all the trouble I drawn to their door, all the fucking sleepless nights I gave them, like everything, like. They were still there at the end of my bed every single day, you know. And, like, I was shouting at them in the hospital, everything, and it was just like they were still there at the end. They were still there at the end of my bed, like every single day, like, and like my, you know, I, my dad had said to me before about like <coughs> AA meetings and NA meetings and stuff and I used to go to a few but like they'd go off my head like, you know what I mean? And I'd run up the door again like like it was like, will you go to treatment? Like, you know, he suggested to me to go to treatment like and like still I didn't think I had a problem with drinking drugs like no way in my head did I ever think that it was because of drinking drugs that I was lying in a hospital bed in intensive care like 
after fucking I don't know how many hospitalizations, after how many suicide attempts, all that kind of stuff. I didn't think it was the drinking drugs, like I had no idea, I just thought it was me, like I mean I thought I was the only person that was like that, like I was thought I was the only person that felt like that, that felt like this, that felt them emotions, that had them thoughts. I thought it was just me, there was something wrong with me. And um he suggested me to go to treatment like and no. I couldn't continue living my life the way I was living, like I couldn't. I would have been dead. I would have like I knew I would leave in the hospital, I would have done the same thing again and I wouldn't have survived the next time, like. You know I don't know how to fuck with my life today, like I don't like the amount of times I've tried and I honestly don't know how I'm alive, like. Um but I went to treatment. I went to Tabor Lodge, which is a primary treatment centre, like and I went in, I had no fucking idea what I was getting myself into, like, I didn't, like, you know what I mean? I was, like, 45 kilos, like, I was yellow on the face and the sodium, the hospital was pumping into me. You know, I'm actually going to throw up a few pictures on the screen here now of just how I used to look. Um, I, I know I have a picture from, like, oh, two weeks before my last suicide attempt, and I have another one, like, a couple of weeks before that and stuff. I'm just going to put them up on the screen here now, just so... Just so just so you have an idea of how I used to look and that kind of side of things. And like, you know, I went to treatment like again with no fucking idea what was what I was getting myself into like at all. I had no idea like no I had no idea at all what the fuck I was getting myself into like. I didn't. And um I went like and I still hated myself, I still wanted to kill myself, like I didn't you know, I didn't want to be there, I didn't want to speak about how I was feeling, I didn't want to like when I went to rehab, like you know, the, in rehab they break it down to build you back up, like you yeah, get routine in your life, like do you know what I mean? Like so, like I thought I was going to be like prison, like do you know what I mean? Like go there, I like, know for an hour, come to like go back up to bed, and that was it, like do you know what I mean? But I got some fucking fright, like when I went down, like I went down, like and you're up in the morning to meditate, and like if they all eat your breakfast together and you've routine, you're going from fuck at seven o'clock in the morning. I'd never seen seven o'clock in the morning unless I was up from the night before, before that, like do you know what I mean? Um, it's nuts, like. It was fucking bonkers, like. But, like, a couple of weeks went on down there, like, and I started to listen to people opening up about how they felt and stuff, like, and I, I started listening to people talking about how they felt and that kind of sort of things, and that was all alien to me, like, because, like, you know, I suppose, like, if I was fucking sitting down with people and I wanted to speak about how I was feeling and shit, they'd just laugh at me, like, do you know what I mean? Like, if, if I wanted to show that I was vulnerable and speak about what emotions I was feeling and shit, people would laugh at you, like. I thought people would laugh at you, like, do you know what I mean? I did, like, like I can't fucking speak about this shit, like, like I'm not speaking, I'm not weak, I'm not vulnerable, I'm not fucking speaking like that. I'm gonna try to be the hard man, they're fucking snorting away a fucking bag, they're thinking I'm the bee's fucking knees, like, that's a lot of bollocks, like, do you know what I mean? And it was only, it took me to get to rock bottom to realise that, like, that, like, I was down in treatment and I started listening to how people were speaking and about how people were speaking about what was going on in their head, like, and everyone that spoke down there, like, no matter what age they were, no matter where they were from, no matter what, you know, no matter who they were, like, I, I could relate to something they all said, like, you know, I was like, I feel like that too, and I've experienced that, like, and I've went through this, and I've went through that, like, and, you know, I've, I finally felt that I wasn't alone, like, and I finally got that little bit of hope, like, you know, a little fucking backwards there now, because I forgot something, like, but, like, you know, I remember it was my second day down there, like, and on your second day down there, like, you gotta sit up in front of the group, like, and you have to tell your story, like, you have to speak in front of the group and tell your story, like, and, and I tried to scribble shit down on a fucking piece of paper to go up and write a bit of a story, whatever, like, and I just said my name, and I just mentioned my buddy Dan, Dan's name, and I just burst out crying, like, I burst out crying because, like, I just said his name, I started to cry, like, and I couldn't finish my story, like. Oh, I still remember Claire's day, like, literally sitting in front of a group of strangers, like, I'd never in my life spoke about in front of anyone, like, I haven't, like, said about two, scribbled about two lines and spoke them out, like, and then I mentioned Dan and I burst out crying and I couldn't finish my story, like. Shit, like, it's tough even speaking about this shit, like, I know I'm only speaking to a camera and Steve, like, but I'm in a heap air, like, you know what I mean? Because it brings it all back, like, you know. Does like, like I mentioned his name and I just couldn't, I couldn't like, do you know what I mean? I couldn't at all, like. But anyway, like, um, 
So as I said, like I started to listen to people and stuff like that and stuff, and started to relate to people and stuff, and then, um, you know, I suppose like. I suppose like I started speaking to my counsellor a little bit like and I remember the first day I spoke to my counsellor about a little bit that was going on inside my head like I went to bed that night and I had such a weight lifted off my chest like and it's weird like you know I never in my life thought I could feel that weight coming off my chest a little bit like you know, I obviously wasn't fucking cured after like but like it was a weight lifted off my chest a little bit like and it was bonkers how I felt like so like started to open up more and more and stuff like but then my fucking time in this treatment centre was over like no, um, and like <coughs> I was down in treatment, like and like they suggested to me down there to go to Fellowship House, which is a secondary treatment centre, like and like you know, I was just like at this stage, you know, I was like, great, I'll do whatever, like do you know what I mean? Like they could have told me to fucking jump backwards off a bridge and I'd have been jumping off it, like do you know what I mean? I can't even swim, like but we'd be going anyway, but like so they said the secondary treatment centre, like and I I thought in my head, right in my head, like that, like. Right, I'm going to the secondary treatment centre now, it's another fucking four months of my life, right? And I'm going to do this and then I'm going to be cured and I'm going to be grand and I'm going to be able to go back and live a normal life, happy days. Like, but like, and I went to the secondary treatment centre, like, I went, like, and, you know, I was trying to give it my all, whatever and stuff, with speaking about how I was feeling and stuff and all this stuff, like, take what I took from the first treatment centre, that one. So I was speaking about how I was feeling and all that stuff, like, and this time I actually fucking, I was going into treatment and I had an idea of what it was about, like, and, Right, I can do this. Like, I mean, I can do this. Like, and uh, you know, after a month in that treatment center, or a fucking month, six weeks, whatever, in that treatment center, and you know, I fucked up again. Like, um, you know, in this treatment center, you're left allowed, 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 allowed out for uh, an hour in the evening to go to like an NA or an AA or a GA meeting, um, and instead of going to a meeting, I went to the bookies. And I was gambling, like, you know, I was just, I needed an escape, like, I always need an escape, like, and I got caught with the betting slips in my wallet, like, and I got thrown out of the treatment centre, like, and, like, you know, I remember Claire's day, like, you know what I mean, like, I closed my eyes and I see it, like, and I remember it, like, you know what I mean, I just, I just remember that fear of failure inside me again, like, you know, sitting on the outside the door on the step of the treatment centre, my bag's packed, crying, I mean, like, you fucking failed again, Mikey, like, you've done it again, like, you fucking failed, like you're a failure, like. And I immediately thought I was gonna go back to that suicidal little boy, like, do you know what I mean? Fucking that depended on drinking drugs to live my life, like and You know I said fuck this like you know I'm fuck this, I can do this, like do you know what I mean on the step like that day I was like I can do it like so like you know I used what I was taught in the treatment centres like, do you know what I mean? And I fucking went to two NA meetings. So Narcotics Anonymous meetings every day for fucking months. Literally my life revolved around them two meetings a day like and like you know I didn't have a penny to my name, I owed fucking thousands. I had no job, I'd no nothing, I was on the dole. I had nothing I had nothing like at all, nothing. I was like I can fucking do this, like I'm not I've never wanna feel the way I felt before, like I never wanna do it, like and I, it's that fear of failure that pushed me through it, like and me sitting on that step outside the treatment centre after being asked to leave, like, was my turning point in my recovery, like, it was, like, 100% it was, like, I was like, I'm not fucking failing again, like, I'm not, like, and, uh, you know, there's a sea scheme there up in Churchfield, Community Trust, and it's an organic veg garden, like, so you grow vegetables and that kind of stuff, you get a little bit more than your dole, and they teach you, like, life skills, and they, like, you know, they just kind of like this counselling up there and this guidance and all that kind of sort of things. It's it's for like it. What it is is like a place that people go when they come out of treatment or when they come out of prison and this type of stuff to give someone a chance of easing their way back into like normal life. Um, and like you know, I was after getting thrown off one C scheme in a treatment centre, so like I wasn't allowed on the second treatment. I wasn't allowed on the second C scheme, like. Um. But they, to be fair, up there they said, look. You can come up, you can get involved, like, but you just won't be getting the extra money or any of that kind of stuff, just things from it, like. And uh, I went up every day, every single day I went up. You know, I was gardening, I was doing some cooking up there, that kind of side of things, like, you know, and, like, I forgot to say earlier, like, you know, like, the whole way through my addiction, like, the whole way through my troubles, my struggles, the suicidal thoughts, I think the only, the only way I could switch off from it, like, and escape from my thoughts in my head was through food. 
and creating food and studying food and looking up food and making things and it was the only escape I ever had. It was the only thing I was passionate about in my life really like the only thing I actually cared about like and actually enjoy doing like and that was my only escape like so like up in the sea scheme like I was growing vegetables and stuff I was cooking every Thursday I was cooked for like 30 people like cooked for the house like and I fucking loved it like you know um I was up in the sea scheme like whatever like and I and I met my one of my best friends still to this day up there like you know what I mean and he knows who he is like Barry like you know what I mean and like I think if it wasn't for Barry like Barry saved my life like you know what I mean on a few so many times like do you know what I mean? I literally like I seen Barry and I was like, I wanna be like this guy, like do you know what I mean? I wanna be like this guy, like do you know what I mean? He was just he was a few years ahead of me in recovery and stuff like and he just he was just he's just Barry, like if you know him, you know him, like do you know what I mean? And uh Barry introduced me to martial arts again from there, like, you know, he was a coach in a local jiu jitsu club. Um so like I'd never done jiu jitsu before, I'd done boxing and stuff like but he brought me down to the jiu jitsu club anyway, like and um I fucking fell in love, like, do you know what I mean? Like, I fell in love, like, with jiu-jitsu, like, and I was, uh, I used to train every day, like, you know, and, like, every single day I trained, and I started bunking the sea scheme, fucking to go down and train more and stuff, like, you know what I mean? And, like, I was just, like, I was, like, this was my new addiction was jiu-jitsu, like, do you know what I mean? Like, martial arts and stuff, like, and, uh, you know, like, literally I had the same routine every day, like, I'd go up to Churchville in the morning, do my thing, like, and, like, Go down and I train at lunchtime. I go back up to Churchfield and then I go back training afterwards. Like and then we'd go into a meeting in the evening, and uh, then we go for a coffee and like play games of chess and things like that. Like inside internet cafe in town. Like and like, you know, I actually only spoke about this recently enough. Like um, with Barry. Like you know, like I, I didn't have a penny. Like I didn't have no money at all back then. Like you know, I didn't like I, I had nothing. Like I literally didn't have. When I mean it, I had nothing. Like. Um, and like you know, we used to be in there, and we used to go for a coffee after the meeting. And you know, like I remember Claire's day, like you know, you put your hand in your pocket and you'd look at what coins you have, like and you know, some days I didn't even have money for a coffee, like I didn't like, I'd be like, alright, I'm not gonna get a coffee today now because I want to get one on Saturday when I'm in town for longer and stuff, like. I uh, coffee's two fifty, like I, di I didn't have it, like I didn't have it at all. You know, we, 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 we were looking back the other day, myself and him, and we were just we just. Just brought it up and just remember that time we were in there and we literally didn't have two fifty for a coffee like. But like I got into jujitsu I can you know jujitsu jujitsu was a huge part of my recovery and my journey like because you know like ju 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 <laughs> you know jujitsu and the lads I met in jujitsu and you know they were just like they just saved me, like, do you know what I mean? The boxing met in jiu-jitsu, like, do you know what I mean? They did, like, they gave me purpose to my life again, like, do you know what I mean? Like, like, we were training every day, like, I was like, I could chat to them, like, I, like, you know, we had something in common with someone again, and I just loved it, like, and like, you know, I got to start competing in jiu-jitsu. I started competing really, really early, because I was training fucking twice a day, every day, like, do you know what I mean? I got good quick enough, like, so I started competing, like, and I was like, this is nuts, do you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm competing in things, like, do you know what I mean? Like, this is crazy, like, and you know, I was. I remember I fucking got the opportunity then to start traveling for uh, Jiu Jitsu, like, to competitions and stuff like that. I got sponsored by the place I was uh, working part time in at the time, like, and I got to go over to Rome for the Europeans. And uh, I remember I got second place in the Europeans after loads of fights and stuff, whatever, like. And, uh, you know, I was on the podium, like. I was on the podium with my fucking silver medal, like, and I just fucking, like, I was in a heap, I was crying, I was fucking whatever and stuff, like, and, like, you know, I was crying and everything and stuff, like, but, like, the reason I was crying and the reason I was doing all this stuff was because, like, that was the first time in about eight years, I'd say, more. To be honest, it was the first time I can ever remember saying I was proud of myself, like, you know, saying that, like, something I put my time and effort into, I'm proud of what I'd done. And this coming from a suicidal, drug-addicted teenager, young fella, that hated himself and hated everything about himself, like, to know a couple of year and a half later, I could say I was proud of myself. That's a huge fucking step for me, like, and it is, like, you know what I mean? And that's why Jiu-Jitsu helped me so much, like, you know, like, I went from... 
I went from the C scheme, when I was on the C scheme, I went from doing the C scheme then I got a part time job, again with food, like in a cafe and I was doing brunch two days a week, so I was growing all organic vegetables and stuff during the week in the C scheme and then I was able to bring them in and cook with them and stuff. And you know my passion for food just kind of started then again, like, and I went from there to a few other jobs and stuff. I remember the transition from working a C scheme and part time to full time, like, and like, I was so scared, but I done it, like, you know what I mean? I done it, like, and like, you know what? The way I'm talking about this now, like, it wasn't all fucking playing sailing, like, you know what I mean? I struggled big time with my head, big time, as in like, I was still going to meetings all the time. I was still going to counselling, you know. I didn't have any confidence or anything at the stage, like, you know, I didn't, like, I didn't, like, I was still a shy little fucking Bukalini, like, I mean, I was just, like, Bukali or Bukalini? Bukali, maybe? A boy, anyway, you know, obviously Irish wasn't my topic of choice, but, like, um, you know, I was still, I was still in a heap of anxiety, and I was still in a heap of depression at this stage, like, so, I mean, I just had enough confidence or nothing, like, I was just in a fucking heap still, like, and, like, you know, I kind of started to do a bit of work on myself then as well, like, do you know what I mean, like, you know, I started to kind of take, again, what I kind of, was a lot of thought and treatment and stuff like, you know, meditation, you know, self-care, you know, mindfulness, this kind of side of things, like, um, I started to just practice them on a daily basis, like, you know what I mean, I did, started to practice on a daily basis, and, you know, I suppose at the time I went down, my head got a little bit easier, better, like, you know what I mean, I, I started to kind of accept the fact that I struggled with my mental health, and I still to this day struggle with my mental health, but I've accepted the fact of that, and I've learned ways to deal with how I do, like, and, um, you know, that's when I kind of started to speak openly about my journey and stuff like, you know, I remember, I think it was when, was it, I think the day I turned two years clean was the first thing I kind of posted on Instagram about my recovery and that kind of side of things, because like I was really, really ashamed of who I was and ashamed of being a drug addict at uh, 22, 23 years of age, I was ashamed of myself, like, I mean, I was ashamed to say it, like, and ashamed what people were going to think of me and I was, I was think, doing what people thinking of what they were going to think of me and stuff like, but um, you know, I started to speak then, I suppose, a little bit about my struggles and stuff like that, like, you know what I mean? And um, but to be honest, which was weird for me, like, because, like, I never spoke to anyone, like, I didn't, like, I don't know how people were going to react, whatever, and stuff, like, but I just started to write a few things, like, and just put them up, like, and, you know, I kind of, um, I started speaking a little bit of Instagram, not really chatting on my stories, not going to say things, but just started putting up little posts and stuff. And I, you know, I carried on anyway, and um, no, I remember I was just going to fast forward a little bit, because like, like, you know what I mean, it was just going to back and forward, doing bits and pieces, whatever and stuff, and I remember the lockdown hit, the lockdown hit, like, in like, you know, the first lockdown, like, so like, for this time last year ago, this time last year ago, this time last year, and like, you know, we didn't know what the crack of work was, I was kind of in a heap again, my routine was completely gone, do you know what I mean, because like, gyms were closed, works were closed, all that kind of stuff, thing, my summer routine was completely gone. Um, and I, I, the first two weeks of lockdown, I had I struggled big time again. Like it was, it was probably the worst I struggled since I got out of rehab. Um, I struggled big time. Um, just around the whole lot of it and stuff like, and I was like, what am I going to do to fill my time and all this kind of side of things, whatever and stuff like. And something I always wanted to do but never had the confidence to do was to share my recipes and share my food and that kind of side of things and stuff like. I just didn't have the confidence to do it, like, I was like, no one's gonna care or think or watch what I, what I have to put out to the world, like, you know, I don't have anything good that I can give to people, and there's anything that people can learn from me and stuff, and, remember the 1st of April, 2020, I put up my first recipe, um, it was a Thai red curry, and, like, you know, I don't know how to edit, I don't know how to do any of this kind of stuff, I don't know how to fucking do any of this kind of stuff, but I just posted a picture, and I, like, the recipe, but I just done it in my notes, like, so I had to put ingredients and made it, like, and I posted it. And I got a crazy response to it, like, you know what I mean, I, I didn't have follow much followers at all at this time, like, you know what I mean, I probably 1,500 less. I posted it, and I got such a good response and stuff, like, and, you know, I remember then my buddy, Nathan, Nathan Adams, um, asked me would I do a takeover on uh, his company, RMPR's page, and, like, would I do a takeover recipe and like chat on the thing about the recipe and stuff like and I remember I was in such a heap. Like, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I can't talk to the camera, I can't do this, I can't do this, I can't, I can't, I can't do this. 
you know, and I done it. I was like, what's the worst that can happen? I'll just do it like, and I done that, and that, and that, and then I started to do more speeds, and started to do more takeovers, and, and this kind of side of things and stuff, and I kind of, it kind of gave me the confidence to be like, right, I can do this, like, you know what I mean? I can actually do this, like, you know what I mean? I can, I can give something to someone, like, you know what I mean? From what I can do and what I know, I can, I can help other people, like. And I just suppose I started posting recipes every day. I said I was spending so much money on food for recipes, like I was literally like every day I was in the English market spending 30, 40 quid. I didn't have that much money at all at this stage. I had no money really at this stage, like but I was just doing it like and I was just getting recipes and doing them up and stuff like and it was nuts. And I remember I used to make these cheesecakes like just from like people like my family and I kind of said whatever and I was like no, I want to do something for Pierre the house, like, you know what I mean? That's what I want to do, I was like, I want to do something for Pierre the house, like, I want to, so, like, I just put up on my story that, like, I was selling cheesecake pots, like, little pots, they were a fiver, and, and I was like, I'm going to donate the money to Pierre the house. And, uh, I don't know, man, I could not believe the amount of people that wanted cheesecake pots, like, and, like, I'm just getting so much messages and all this kind of stuff, like, people ordering and all this kind of stuff, and, like, literally, I just made them, I just made them and I was dropping them around in my car, like, to people, like, do you know what I mean? And, like, I just donated the money to pay the house. Do you know, I just wanted to give back, like, in the time because I just wanted to do something. I'm like, what can I do, like? And, uh, you know, that was my first kind of experience with a business, we'll say. Business, like, being, being able to do something, like, do you know what I mean? Being able to, like, look after all the logistics of how much things I need to order, all that kind of stuff, and like how much I need to do, and like how the best way of getting money off people is, and getting it out to them, and that kind of sort of thing. Or some sort of cheesecakes. And like, it was nuts. That like literally, selling them cheesecakes literally is, opened my head completely to, I can do this, like, you know, I, I, I can have my own business, like, I can eventually have my own business and stuff, like, you know what I mean? It's like I can do this, like, and uh, you know, I remember when I the first after the first two weeks on cheesecakes, I put out my first IGTV video, um, my first IGTV about like speaking about how I was feeling and speaking a little bit about my journey and why I donated to Pierre at Pierre House and that kind of side of things. I remember, I put up my first ever IGTV video and like. When I posted it, the response I got from it was absolutely nuts, like, as in nuts. Like, I think I got like 5,000 followers that night I put it up, like, it has like 70, 80,000 views on Instagram and stuff, like, and like, it was bonkers, like, I still, I still, I, I still get fucked up even thinking about it, like, do you know what I mean? Like, that much people have looked at it and seen it and stuff. And, uh, you know, I just kind of, I tried to, I tried to do everything in my power possible to, from the shit I went through and the experience I went through, by speaking about it, maybe I could help someone else. You know, try break that stigma around mental health, around drugs, around addiction, around all this kind of sort of things. That's why that's why I was doing these videos and stuff like. I mean, that's why I was doing these posts. That's why I was explaining. It wasn't for fucking sympathy. It wasn't for followers. It wasn't for likes. It wasn't for oh fucking look at him, whatever. It was just if what I went through and what I experienced can help one person. That's why I done it, like. And you know, that went on anyway. I was speaking a little bit, I was doing my recipes on Instagram and stuff, whatever, and like then and my uncle came to me and he was like, Can you prepare my food for me? Like I wanna lose weight, could you prepare my food for me? And I was like, Yeah right, no worries, like it's so, like I started it off, I was just doing it at home in my mum's house like literally I had one client. I was in my mum's house like one client, I was doing it like fucking two meals a day, five days a week. That was it, like so it just took me two days to do it, whatever. Started my mum's house, like, you know, I was getting containers and just doing it, like, but, like, remember that time, like, a packet of containers would last me fucking a month more, two months, like, you know, and, uh, from there then, like, I just put up a picture one day of the meal prep I was doing and, like, people texted me and said they were interested in it and stuff, like, so, like, I took on one or two other people, like, and, like, then it got to a stage where I couldn't really do it at home, so, like, I was blessed to be working in such a great place with great people and working for great people and lads and Joes and bros like Joe, Cullum and Sip. Um, you know, they helped me so much like they did. And I'm so grateful and I'll be forever grateful for the lads and how much they've helped me to get to where I am today. 
Um, they said I could use the kitchen inside Joe's and Bros in the evening time, like to do it, do it like after work and stuff, like you know, rent free and stuff. They just like can use it away, whatever and stuff like. And uh, you know, slowly but surely, I started to kind of build up a few clients and stuff like. Um, remember, I had like two or three first, then it was like four, then it was five, and I just I started tipping up, like tipping up, and like and it got to a stage where like I had literally so many messages on my Instagram that like people wanted to sign up for meal prep and they've heard about my meal prep and they want to sign up and stuff like and um then i was like shit i was like what the fuck's going on here I was like people actually want things that i can do like you know what i mean and um you know then i got to a stage where i was like right i gotta register this business because i can't keep doing this like you know what i mean remember i registered the business and i got to a stage where like i was working for the lads but like i'd work from the morning to like five six o'clock then i'd literally run home have a bite to eat and go back into work and I'd been there till like two, three in the morning, like seven days a week I worked like constantly, like you know, I was working for them, I was working for myself constantly, I never had a day off, I didn't have nothing and I was like I was running myself to the ground like I was a couple of months went on doing that like and I was like a couple of months went on and I was doing it like and I was like right like I'm gonna have to take a step like do you mean I'm gonna have to take the next step and go out and do this full time like and I swear to God, I was literally crippled inside with the fear and the anxiety of the whole lot. Like, like going from a steady paycheck every week, a steady paycheck cut from two things per week. Like, do you know what I mean? And be like, then to to, to get no paycheck and have to fend for myself and like setting up a business and paying rent, paying taxes, and all this shit that was just alien to me and is alien to me still. You know, I I doubted myself and I. I had so many sleepless nights around the situation and all that kind of side of things and stuff like and you know I just said fuck it like I just I set myself a date and I was like I'm gonna do it for this date like I am I'm gonna do it like what's the worst that can happen you know what I mean I fail and I go back working for someone else no worries like at least I can say I tried like and I done it like no I just took a bullet I rented a ki rented a kitchen rented a kitchen and started going with it like and then like the five clients turned into fucking 15 clients to turn into 30 clients to turn into fucking 50 clients before I even knew it like you know what I mean and it's still bonkers to me like that like literally this day three years ago I was in treatment I was in rehab this day three years ago and right now I'm sitting up in my apartment my car is downstairs this is all materialistic things that mean absolutely fucking nothing to me I don't care about materialistic things I know what I look like that I do, but I don't like, do you know what I mean? What's most important for me is how my head is feeling on a day, like, do you know what I mean? But, like, I'm sitting here, right? Three years ago today, I was in fucking rehab, right? I'm sitting here now in an apartment. My apartment, whatever, I'm recording for a YouTube channel that I never in my life thought I could ever have the confidence to even speak. Speak to a camera and stuff, you know? I've got my business, I've got people working for me. I'm now in the middle of setting up my second business. You know, in the next couple of weeks, my second business is going to be out. <laughs> and, like, this is shit that's nuts for me, like, it, it, it's nuts. You know, I honestly feel like it's a dream and I'm going to wake up someday and it's going to be all over, like. I just wake up that I'm dreaming, like, you know. I'm so blessed and so grateful to have had the help and, and the people around me and my family that, like, got me through times when I was in a bad situation, like, you know. And I was bad, like, you know, literally a couple, three years ago, I thought and sought no other way but to take my own life, like, you know, I'm here, I'm, I'm speaking about it, I'm able to speak about it, I have the confidence to speak about it, you know, I have my business, I work for myself, like, it's, 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 it's fucking nuts, like, um, you know, like, it, it, it's nuts to me, like, it is nuts, like, that, like, I suppose the right, them, like, You know, like, it's just, it, it, again, as I said, like, it doesn't even feel real, like, I feel like that I'm going to wake up and it's not, it's, it's all going to be gone, like, and it's just going to be, like, you know, but, like, I'm so grateful, like, I'm so grateful, like, and, like, that's why I speak about this shit, like, that's why I openly show my vulnerable side and that's why I openly talk about my struggles and my problems and stuff because, like, I want to do everything I possibly can to help someone that was in a situation that I, like, that I was in. You know, I was like, I wonder if I 
knew the stuff I knew now and if I seen stuff now that like would I have getting that bad or would I have been able to speak about it and stuff like I don't know I just it's all thinking but like that's my goal now like is like I just want to help as much people as I possibly can like you know I can't fucking work wonders and I can't do wonders but like I, I just want to do the next right thing to help people like and I find by opening up about my struggles and showing my vulnerable side like that maybe that, that, that that's, that's what I can do like but like you know every day every morning I wake up like every single morning I wake up I look at myself in the mirror like and you know I look at myself in the mirror every single morning like and I'm like you can do this like do you know what I mean I talk to my buddy Dan and I'm saying I'm doing it for you like you know of you that like she wanted to be proud of me like you know I just I just uh, I just want to make her proud like and like you know what the reason for this video and all this shit like is not to show like oh you're doing fucking great whatever and stuff like it's to show like that no matter how bad of a situation you're in and no matter how shit you think you have it and how low you think you are like there's always a way out like there is there's always a way out, like, and just speak about what's going on for you, like, do you know what I mean? Just speak about it, like, I'm literally living proof that, like, you can literally come from rock bottom and you can do something positive with your life, like, you can. That's why you get emotional, like, do you know what I mean? I don't give a shit showing my emotion, like, I don't give a shit crying in front of a camera, like, I don't give a shit crying in front of, God knows how many people are going to watch this, you know what I mean? Because this is real shit, like, this is real life, like, there's so many things on there fake as fuck, like, do you know what I mean? people editing things and recording things hundred times over like there's no script for this shit this is real like this is my life this is my journey like and that's why I speak about it like you know what I mean so no matter how bad you think you have it like no matter how shit you think you are no matter how much bad of a day you're having no matter how bad of a week you're having no matter how many bad of a fucking year you're having there's a way back from it like and uh thank you